So there I was, sitting in my office, doing some GM things, when in walks this guy. Now I know what you may be thinking, who the heck is this guy? Well, this guy is my boy Carter, and Carter and I, you see, we go way back, known each other forever, and Carter's one of those guys who's always been a bit of a, a draft nerd, thinks he knows best when it comes to the NBA draft, and he just pops a squat in the office and starts talking, saying, hey, first off, I just gotta say that this is an absolutely loaded draft class. Not only is the lottery stronger than usual, not only is there starters all throughout the first round, but even the second round could have two or three all-stars this year. The second round, and I'm already just baffled by what this guy's got to say, but he does not stop there. He keeps going, saying that there's a, this big three going around that's kind of cleared themselves, separated themselves from the top. And those big three is Jackson Baldwin, Mirko Petrovic, and Freddie Staples. And he's telling me, man, that he does not take this lightly, that these three have LeBron, Melo, and Wade potential. Now, this guy is starting to sound pretty loco to me. But he's saying that all these guys, they've got different skill sets, but there's the kind of impact that's going to be franchise players, all NBAs throughout their careers, championships, the whole thing. So I decided to humor him a little bit. You know, he's talking a lot of smoke for this draft, but you know, he's always had a thing with the draft. So I thought I'd at least hear him out. So I asked him to go ahead and fill me in on these three prospects. And he goes first in on Jackson Baldwin, who's out of Kentucky. You want to talk unicorns? This kid's got a horn so big you could see it from space. That surely is something, man. He's 6'10", but he passes like Steve Nash. Right now, he dominates with athleticism, monster on the break, great vision. Think Greek freak, but American. From Kentucky, signed with Kentucky, and loves it in Kentucky. They call him the, Gr the Greek freak. My goodness, who wrote this? Goodness. So, Greek freak is just the start of it, right? He goes in on his second guy here, Freddie Staples, who runs the point at UCLA. You think they broke the mode with Westbrook? No shot, buddy. Turns out they reinforced it with titanium, poured a bunch of molten lava, and popped out Freddie Staples. Telling you this right now, you're not going to see anyone like this kid ever again. Not the biggest guy in the world, but an absolute beast. Crazy jumping, shoots the lights out, benches more than guys twice his size, and loves playing de defense. Absolutely loves it. This guy has got the drive like Westbrook. He's Curry with the shot and vintage Tony Allen on D. What is this guy, dude? I mean, y'all thought Scoot was a good prospect. How about Freddie Staples? Well, anyway, I asked him to tell me about this third guy. These first two are crazy what's he gonna say about this third guy at this point you know what i mean third guy he says i wouldn't quite rate him third any of these kids will change your franchise forever but this kid is mirko petrovic the croatian anthony davis 7-1 runs like a gazelle and has already got a fully developed arsenal of post moves needs to prove he can consistently knock down the three to reach his full holy cow potential what is this but he's good for 86 percent from the line this year in the spanish league and he's got a nice feathery touch on his outside shot that makes it really easy to see him getting to elite territory someday after all that i am obviously baffled what the heck was that speech but i kick carter out of the office and thank everything that I have, that he is not on my scouting team because that was pretty crazy. All right, now that our conversation with our friend is out of the way, let's go ahead and form our own opinions on these players. And of course, here at the top, you can see the big three he was speaking of, the Croatian Anthony Davis, the Creek Freak, and... Westbrook with the drive, Curry with the shot, and Tony Allen with the defense, according to our friend here. If you're wondering where those kind of little cussings that I inputted 
came from. They came from the My GM storyline in NBA 2K18. And I took the screenshots from a video fairly recently put up by YouTuber Click Productions at CLI QUE Productions. He had an awesome video where he went back and played the game and gave me the idea to put these guys in my franchise this year. So shout out to that awesome video from Click Productions. If you haven't checked out his channel, I would highly recommend it. He does great rebuilds over there. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at these players, starting with Mirko Petrovic, who's rated uh, as 3, 1, and 4. Somebody has, has him rated 4? Oh, no, that's not correct. So he's rated 3, 1, and 1. I think come draft time, Jackson Baldwin will be the pretty consensus number one here. Um, uh, he's a 6 foot 10, 250 pound wing who's an incredible athlete. Um, not a great three point shooter yet. And even though the scout said his vision is great, this one says otherwise. I did take these guys. Basically, there was somebody in the 2K share file who put these guys up there. I edited the, them slightly just because their badges were a little bit crazy. So I toned down the badges a little bit and I edited their looks. But I didn't change their overall. I didn't change their potential. I know what their overall rating is for all three of these guys because I wanted to make sure it wasn't like 89 or something ridiculous, right? I wanted it to be in line with what it was in the game 2K18. And they are all within like a point or so. So I don't know what their actual ratings inside are, but it seems like 2K18 probably had better vision for Jackson Baldwin than this version does since the scout pointed out his vision as a, a positive. But... Um, so slightly different, uh, or not our scout. He was a scout in the game, but in, in this universe, he's just our friend who's not on the scouting staff. But uh, I think Jackson Baldwin's pretty easily the best. Let's go, we see really anything. Okay, we got some grades on him here. D three point shooting's not very good. Really good outside inside score and mid range is solid too. Playmaking's really good. B for both of his defenses. Athleticism is an A plus. Just need to kind of work on his IQ, it looks like here. But um, I think he's going to be a slam dunk pick. Definitely a guy worth taking for, for sure. But if you don't get the number one pick, Mirko Petrovic just after him. Like the scout said, not there, quite there with the three-point shooting yet. But a solid playmaker for his center. B-plus promoter defense at center is really nice too. A-minus post defense, A-plus rebounding, A-athleticism, B-IQ. In terms of consolation prizes, if you don't get the number one pick, it's hard to get worse than Mirko Petrovic. And then kind of the guy who looks like he's in third place right now is Freddie Staples. And his overall is a little bit lower to start out, but scoring, playmaking, and defense. I mean, this guy looks like kind of the perfect point guard. And I know it is difficult to build a team around a 6'2 guard these days. This kind of was the debate around Scoot Henderson in the real life draft this year. And we've got a case of that here in this draft. Is a 6'2 point guard, no matter how good of a prospect he is, is that somebody that you should be taking here at the top of the draft? That's why I think he's kind of in these guys that are all of the same tier. He is rated the lowest right now. But any of these three, if we can land them on the squad, would be massive, massive pieces to our draft only rebuild. I thought it would be fun to put in a little bit of kind of a set draft class like they used to do in 2K for a couple of years. Then they just totally stopped and I don't know why I wish they would have kept it because I honestly really, I, I really like it. I think it's a fun idea to have this big three that our friend came and told us about and we'll see if we're able to land any of these guys. That is very far in the future though. We still have a lot to do in terms of this season. We're literally one game in which we lost 23 points to the Pelicans. And just a quick reminder, one of the settings that I put here is simulator difficulty. It's up to 70 in this franchise. Um, it's going to be tougher to get those wins when we simulate. And a large part of this series is going to be simulating. And we're not going to play that many of 82 regular season games. And so we made morale a little bit easier. Well, a lot of it easier. I just think morale's not totally handled well by 2K. Chemistry more difficult. And tune down injuries a little bit. So these are some of our non-gameplay sliders. I know I showed the gameplay sliders. I just can't remember if I showed these sliders in last episode. So here's... 
These sliders and the gameplay sliders that I showed last episode are the only things that I've really tweaked. You can change so much in this game and it's so far ahead of the curve uh, in terms of customizability, in terms of slider sets. We can change the way the game simulates as well. If that becomes a problem, I might look into it later, but for now, I'm pretty okay with where we are at. In terms of pacing for this franchise, I think for the regular season, while we're bad at least, probably about an episode a month seems about right. That's what I've been doing with my draft only MLB franchise. And I think it maybe goes by a little fast, but not so fast that I feel like we're missing kind of telling a story of a season. So we're gonna go through October here in this episode and i'd like to get ourselves a bit this was a home game if i remember correct yes it was so maybe we take on somebody on the road here let's go ahead and nope actually i changed my mind we're gonna take on the oklahoma city thunder here at home we lose our next two so still have not picked up the first win in franchise history yet luca drops a 40 point triple double on us um Jalen Duran leads us to 26 and 10. Cam Reddish drops 25. Very nicely done by him. Going to the box score. I'm not going to go into every single box score this season, but just in an episode where we're not actually simulating that many games, we can kind of just see what the team is doing. Andrew Nemhard leads us here with 23 and 3. 0 oh, and 3 on the season. Let's go ahead and try to pick up our first win today at home, going against Shea Gilgis Alexander and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Line, uh, running out their lineup is Josh Giddy. Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, and Chet Holmgren. Very exciting young team. and A team that hopefully we can kind of emulate at some point with some ac accumulating some draft capital like they have, getting a bunch of young players. That's kind of the mold that we're eventually going to try to hit. We don't really have any extra picks now, but we definitely want to get there someday. Here for the tip-off at T-Mobile Arena, we've got Atlas versus the Thunder here. The team that used to be the Seattle Supersonics. We will be facing the Sonics at some point this year. Seeing the two expansion teams face off should absolutely be a goal as Giddy can't get the first shot of the game to go. Conley awaiting a screen from Jalen Duren. He'll take it. Jalen Duren wide open down low and he'll slam it home for the first two points of the game. Averaging 22 here to start this season. Shy Gilgis Alexander against Mike Conley. He's probably not one of our favorite matchups this game, but Jalen Dern with the help gets the SWAT. Conley in transition, trying to get a tough layup. No good. Dern with the rebound, though. But an absolutely super involved start to the game from Dern. Mike Conley stepping back from the mid range. Pumps, but doesn't fire. He goes to Lavert. He has to take a contested three next to Josh Giddy, but that one will drop. Giddy isolating against Lavert. He's going to try to go to the rim. Spinning shot is good. Giddy's a tough man to stop once he gets inside. Conley receives the screen from Lavert. He's got Shea on him. Cam Reddish. He's got Dort on him. That's going to be a tough matchup for us today. Conley with the shot from outside will drop. That's another quick three for us on the board and a six point lead early. Giddy with the ball in transition for the Thunder. He dishes to SGA who's got it in the post against Conley. That one will not fall for him. It's been a cold start for Gilgis Alexander. Lavert trying to get it to go over Josh Giddy and he will plus the foul. A really hot start to the game for Las Vegas. Seemingly everything dropping for us and through the contact Lavert Will draw the first three-point Potential play here and he will finish it nine point lead early for us Giddy he's isolating against Lavert gets it inside and gets it to go He's got a bit of a height advantage on that one and he's two for two on his isolation attempts SGA all alone here on the wing against Conley. Takes it inside, draws the foul, and gets the shot to fall. And one here from Conley. Lover top of the key has Reddish on the wing. 
British will get the Durin screen here. Attacking the hoop. He finds Durin just past the outstretched arm of Chet Holmgren, the second dunk of the game. Giddy isolating on Lavert again. Seems to be a go-to play early for OKC, and it has been working. This time, it's going to work even better than it has in the past. The hoop and the harm. Giddy with six early points, trying to make it seven. He has had Lavert's number on this side of the floor, at least. Mike Conley gets a free lane to the hoop. He's just going to pull the mid-range instead. Don't really blame him. He's, he's about five inches shorter than everybody else on the court right now. That's a hoop towards Jalen Duren. I'm sitting here trying to make sure my, I'm centered on my camera. And our team's out here putting in some work. But they'll slow it down now. Duren gets fed inside. Gets fouled on the layup attempts. He'll buy himself a pair of free throws here. No good on the first. Second free throw is good. Double screen for Lavert. He's got Nemhard wide open, but good recovery defense from SGA. Nemhard will take the pick and pull from the mid range. He's got some good ability there, but Duren with the rebound after the miss puts it back up and in. And we are doubling up these Thunder early. We're forcing Giddy into a lot of three-point attempts, which he has not been getting to fall. He'll dish out to SGA. Then the cutting play by Dor. He's blocked by Chuma Okiki. We have been protecting the paint very well so far in this game. Dern hands off to Lavert. He's going from Curry range. Almost gets it to fall, but he's too strong on it. High pick and roll for the Thunder here. The kick to, uh, to uh, Chet Holmgren will be in for the dunk. Just 29% early for OKC, though. In his rookie year, I suppose. That one's a nice driving dunk by Dora. Lavert, high screen from Duran. That's a nice pick, and he gets rewarded for it there on the roll. Slams that one home. Very productive first quarter for Duran. Reddish has the ball on the wing. He's going to get another screen from Duran. He's been very busy. Pull up from the outside is not going to drop. Thunder in transition. Kildas Alexander, nice pullback from the mid-range. That one is pure. And, and the Thunder are making a bit of a comeback after a rough start. Inbound here to Nemhard. Okiki pulls it from deep, and that one is pure. We back up to nine. Nice find by Andrew Nemhard. Kick to SGA. Turnaround from the free throw line is no good, but Pokusevsky with the offensive rebound. And the and one, Isaiah Joe. Uh, based on his defense early on in this series, I don't know if he's going to be a long-term player for us, even though he's got a great shot. She has got Nemhard on him. A little bit better of a size mismatch for us, but still in the direction of the Thunder. And that one will show just why it is important to have size as SGA just gets it right in the face of Nemhard. Whoa! Blow by there by SGA will get him the wide open dunk. Initially good defense by Nemhard just couldn't Follow it up, and that leads to the wide open lane for the Thunderstar. Nemhard gets the high screen, kicks to Green down low, he gets the layup to go. Nice pick and roll play for us there. SGA trying to get by Nemhard again, this time we're going to rather foul him than let him get the easy deuce. That'll be double digit points here in the first quarter for SGA as his second free throw is good. Now we play for the last shot of the first quarter here. Nemhard trying to take it in on SGA. Kicks out to Isaiah Joe. That one will not fall. And so we will take a two point lead into the first as that one almost dropped. 
from about half court. Screen from Darich has Gildas Alexander pulling from three off the dribble and he gets it to fall. And the Thunder take the lead. O'Neal dishes it to Nemhard in the corner who gets a screen from Powell. Green another wide open shot from the corner. This one finds its way home. We immediately respond to the Thunder three with a three of our own. That should be a matchup, but the Thunder are exploding as much as they can, and they will with the giddy SGA pick and roll that works out to perfection. Coming off a screen is Gildas Alexander. He takes it to the cup. Nice aggressive move. We'll draw the Dwight Powell foul. Gildas Alexander has been a problem for us now as he is at the line getting his 17th and 18th points more than half of the thunder points thus far in this game takeover is activated for Al alexander and the to step back midi is pure already 20 points for him we might need to go on and put somebody else on sga for the rest of this game we're gonna call timeouts and I'm going to do just that. I think, apart from the playoffs, I want to be pretty minimal in terms of what I do to alter kind of the game plan. But in situations where it, we're getting absolutely obliterated, I think it's fine. I think a guy like Reddish could be a better matchup for us when he's in the game alongside Alexander. So we'll make that adjustment and we'll see if that makes any impact on SGA's success. Levert with the ball on the wing. He's got Giddy on him. Powell comes and sets the high screen. Gets the ball on the roll and had a little bit of contact there, but fights through it for the basket. SGA totally just blows by Cam Reddish, but he does miss the shot, so I guess there's some impact. Durin set to check back in at the scorer's table right now. Before now, we'll get the Dwight Powell screen and roll. The pass was picked off by Robinson Earl and Kenrick Williams. Kenrich Williams will get the basket on the other end. Levert with Giddy on him. He's going to isolate. Screen from Powell gives him enough space from the mid-range to get the shot to go. Three for five, early for Karis Levert. Giddy, he's trying to drive it in on Levert, and that one will fall. Giddy versus Levert has been almost as successful as SGA versus anybody we put him on. Levert gets the Conley screen, but that play was wild. What was that? The pass went off the bottom of the backboard, and in transition, the Thunder get the baskets. Their lead now increased to six. Cutting screen for Conley. Levert finds him inside and Conley gets the layup to go. Nice pass on time and on target from Levert. Earl pick, kicks it to Williams. SGA, he's gonna draw the foul and get the basket to go. Royce O'Neal charged with the shooting foul that time. Stopping this guy has been something we have objectively failed to do. Williams to Alexander. He's going to isolate against Cam Reddish. Let's see if this defensive adjustment can make an impact here. Screen from Holmgren. That's enough space for SGA to pull it pure. He's already reached his average points per game pretty much. Levert turns around and fires over Giddy. That one will fall. Reddish pulls from top of the key. And that's an offensive rebound by Duran, who gets it to go with the foul from Josh Giddy. Jalen Duran has been the best player for the home team tonight. But is it enough when you have a guy like SGA just basically torching us every possession he's on the court? 
That one is a nice cutting play for Cam. Reddish Isaiah Joe with the feed will pick up the assists. We're back within three here with two and a half minutes left in this half. Holmgren driving on Jalen Dern here. He's going to get pickpocketed by Cam Reddish. Reddish now driving the other way. Gets it all the way inside and gets fouled by Chet. Here, Chet's third here of the first half. Doing a nice job attacking him. Reddish goes pure on his first free throw. Second free throw up and good. Very nice sequence by Cam Reddish there for us. Pokusevsky has Chumo Kiki guarding him. Chuma gets his hand in there and another steal for Las Vegas. We're running again. Chuma tries to go over Pokusevsky and we draw another foul. Great job turning defense into offense over the last couple of possessions. Okiki up and good. Thought that one did not look good coming out of his hand. Chance to retake the lead here on this second free throw, and we'll do just that. Now a 49-48 lead for us. Spin our defense. This brought us back into this one. And now we're in transition. Nemhard, he got blocked. Chumo Kiki wide open in the corner. Gets it to go off of the Jalen Duran offensive rebound. I got to be honest with you, these first couple of episodes, I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Chumo Kiki. British kicks to Nemhard. Nemhard with the pick and roll. Dishes down to Jalen Duran. That one was through some traffic. Thought that one was going to get blocked, but instead, 18 first half points for Jalen Duran. He has been incredible today. Giddy isolating on Cam Reddish. He's been our best defender today. And that one will be good though by Giddy. He's been really good when he's gone inside. He's just taken way too many threes. Javonce Green. Door on him. He dishes back to Nemhard. He's forced to take a three in traffic. And that's the shot he gets to go. He's been cold all night. But gets the three... Right with some defense in his face. That's the one that drops for him. And SGA will take the last shot prior to the halftime horn. And we will take a seven-point lead. Oklahoma City started that quarter on fire. We could not stop SGA. We made a defensive adjustment, and I think it definitely worked out in our favor. And we retook the lead off of some really good defensive plays. And some offensive rebound chances created by Jalen Duran. Levert driving it inside. He's going to do a Euro step layup and get it to fall. Nice move there from Levert for his 12th points of the evening. On the top of the key, he's going to wait for a Duran screen. Take it inside. That's a tough shot for Conley, but Duran gets the board and puts it back home. And the lead is double digits for the Outlaws. It's the second time we've had such a lead in this game. And he gets the high screen and roll. He's pulling from mid-range. Can't get it to drop, but gets his own rebound and puts it back up and in. Probably should have gone to the hole initially there, but hey, they got the points in the end. Vegas in transition now. And Conley, tough layup over Chet Holmgren. Gets it to go up and around him for point number nine. Reddish has Joe on the wing. He drills it up to the top. Conley gets himself a nice look from the mid-range, and that one will drop for him. He retake that 11-point lead, and Conley gets himself two double digits tonight. Kami. Got SGA on him. Hands off to Reddish. Reddish trying to get inside on Dort, but he's a tough guy to get past. Kick out to Joe is pure from the wing. Made six more three-pointers than the Thunder thus far in this game. No surprise the Thunder aren't this great three-point shooting team. Kami gets the Dwight Powell screen. Feeds him inside, and the reverse dunk is up and in. Nice pass from Mike Conley. We've made six more shots on four more attempts so far in this game. Shot clock winding down. Reddish on 
Kills Alexander, but he gets by him and gets the mid-range shot to go. Up to 31 points for SGA. Reddish, he's going to pull from deep, but won't get it to fall. Dort did a nice job getting through those actions there. And speaking of Dort, he finds Jalen Williams inside for the transition Oklahoma City bucket. Nicely executed by them. And that's a pullback shot from the mid-range. That one goes 50% on the day for SGA. He's got it from the mid-range, pulls out, and we will set up an offensive play. Nemhard from three. No. Joe gets another chance. That one's no good either. Nemhard has Chuma wide open from the corner. That one finds its way home. This guy, despite what, like a C plus three pointer, it feels like when he gets a clean look, he's he's dropping these things. Jalen Williams kicks it inside to SGA, the pick and roll between the two. I guess Jalen Williams isn't exactly a guard, but it was a nice play nonetheless. Nemhard has it top of the key. This one kicks to Joe. That's a nice shot for us, but it will not drop. Cannot be mad at that possession, though. Dort gets that one to go over the outstretched arms of Dwight Powell. A little bit of a surprise there. This is it to Nimhart. Nimhart gets the Javante green screen. Spinning inside and gets the finger roll to drop. Finally, he gets something to go for him. 13 point lead as this third quarter winds down. The cutter play towards Kendrick Williams. Jumo Kiki's gonna get called for the foul. A little bit of shove after the play as well. Thought he got that one cleanly. Second free throw will not fall for Kendrick Williams. Green dishes to Lavert. He's driving it inside. Nemhard will hold for the last shot here. He'll get a screen from Jalen Duran. Finds a clean look from the mid range, but it's strong. So 67 to 79 will be the final score of the third quarter. 12 point lead for the Outlaws. Things looking quite good for our chances of getting our first win in franchise history. SGA gets a double pick here. He finds some space on the step back and gets it to fall. 37 now as the fourth quarter is just underway. Jamonte Green finds himself some space from three and finally gets one to drop. He's been not having his best night from deep. Nimhart has it. He gets the screen. Lover tries to find Chumo Kiki on the inside, but that one is stone. Giddy kicks to Holmgren in transition, and the dunk is there. Good transition play from OKC. Three, from, three for nine total from three for Javante Green. Guess it's not quite so bad. Maybe I thought it was worse than it actually was. Kenneth Williams, he'll get that one to go. He was wide open. And it's a single digit lead now for us. SGA, he's going towards the cup and floats that one in. And that's a wide open look for Nimhard. Please drop it home. He can't do it. We can't grab the rebound either. We're missing a lot of really good looks from three today. And Gildas Alexander gets it to go. That's an 11-3 run. The Thunder are instantly back in this ballgame. And we take the timeout. Been over three minutes since we last scored here. Need ourselves a basket. Conley's going to pull from deep, though. That's not the way we we're going to score. No wonder we haven't scored in over three minutes. These are the kind of shots we're taking. SGA was wide open there. Cam Reddish got like 
a really poor animation on that screen. That was such a waste of a freaking ball movement position. And there we go. It works in the end. As Jalen Dern is going to get himself an and one. And finally we score. Took us quite some time. I didn't know if we were going to score the rest of this ball game at one point, honestly. Wide open shot. We left Lou Dort. No one around him, and he gets it to go. Would prefer not to leave guys wide open if we can help it. I know we were trying to double team SGA there, but that's not what I that's not what I want. Cam Reddish. He's gonna pull it from the free throw line and get it to drop. Mid-range not his game, but we'll take and make any way we can get it. Door kicks to Saric. He pulls from deep with the shot clock. Winding down and they get it. Why is Joe leaving so much space there? There's no time on the shot clock. D up, dude. Why we aren't just running pick and roll with Jalen Duran and trying to get him some shots is beyond my comprehension. We're running every play for Mike freaking Conley right now. Isaiah Joe with a clean shot from the mid-range is pure, finally. Get a jump shot to go. Conley driving in on Alexander, but he'll back it off. Then he'll drive again. British has it on the wing. He's going to get a Duran screen and pull from three. No good. I have really not liked what we're running here in the fourth quarter. We're not running the plays that we ran in the first three that were working for us. Giddy has it on the wing. He's going to pull from three. And he gets that one to go. Are you serious, dude? How are they making threes like that when we can't get wide open threes? Oh, this game's frustrating. Luis O'Neal has it wide open from three. Watch. We missed that. And Giddy's making contested off the dribble threes. And he's terrible at them. Oh, my gosh. Sometimes this game just wants a certain team to win. And there's not really much you can do about it. Exhibit F of this fourth quarter of that being the case. What the hell was that? SGA pulls back from the mid-range and it's good. Now OKC has a four-point lead. This game is trash. Can we run a pick and roll with Jalen, MF, and Duran, please? We have not run a single pick and roll with Jalen Duran in the fourth quarter. And it's there's three minutes of it left. Run a pick and roll with Jalen Duran. It's worked for us all game. Why have we run it zero times? Holy crap, Oklahoma City missed a three. Isaiah Joe. Why would we be able to make a single shot in this fourth quarter, dude? Oh. I swear, if we don't run a freaking play here that's actually decent, I'm going to be so pissed. Conley finds himself a three. Thank goodness. One finally goes in. We're like two for 12 from three in this quarter. SGA inside gets it to go because Cam Reddish decided to go for a still instead of playing defense. Nice. Screen and roll with Jalen Duran. Thank you. Except every time we have, the guys just come off the dribble, taking the three-point shot, and not giving Jalen Duran a chance. It's so frustrating the way this team has played in the fourth quarter. We have just absolutely shit ourselves in this quarter. The things we were doing for three quarters to put us in a double-digit lead, we just stopped doing in the fourth quarter altogether. Why did we do that? Jalen Duren has to get an offensive rebound to get a shot in this in this fourth quarter. And he does it with one minute left. Goodness hell.
That's that's how that's how we're finishing this fourth quarter, man. We're just throwing it to the thunder. This team is obviously tanking for Jackson Baldwin because there's no other explanation for how they've thrown away this game. Not a single other explanation. What is going on? Why is my screen green? What is with 2K, dude? Mike Conley has been so terrible. He's hit one shot. Now all of a sudden he thinks he's freaking Michael Jordan. That one goes in. We're just delaying the inevitable. Why is my screen green? Just have to press pause, I guess. We saw Neil kicks to Levert. Levert's taking. What, what are we doing? How have we not shot yet? Oh my gosh. This team had 17 seconds and they shot it with five seconds left. Oh my gosh, dude. This is the most obvious tank job I've ever seen. Holy crap. Obviously, the player of the game is Gildas Alexander. Jalen Duran didn't get any shots in the fourth quarter because this offense decided to say, hey, we have a 12 point lead in the th after the third quarter. Let's stop doing what we've been doing the entire game for no reason. That was such a frustrating fourth quarter to watch. Oh my goodness. Why did we just all of a sudden stop running the stuff that's been working for us? That should have been our first win. Ends up coming against the Lakers. Holy hell. With a 33 point outing from Karis LeVert to lead the way. Uh, yeah. That was one of the most annoying games I have spectated. I've spectated a lot of games on NBA 2K23 in that fourth quarter. Was among the worst I've ever seen. So you got to love that. Um, in terms of anything else I want to do with this episode, I think we're pretty much done for it. But despite a very, very frustrating fourth quarter, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and like what we're doing with the draft class this year. Thought it was going to be a really fun idea, and I hope you guys agree. I'll be back soon with another episode, and I will see you then.